What is going on guys, Shri Kanase here and welcome back to the best Shopify YouTube channel out there. So I recently hosted a poll on my YouTube channel and if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the post notifications by clicking the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. But through this poll, I found out that many of dropshippers just like yourself wanted more tutorials on Google Ads. So I decided it is finally time to make a video on fully optimizing your Google shopping campaign because I do realize due to a lot of the fluctuations with Facebook ads, people have been turning more towards Google. So this is going to be a full on guide from starting to fully optimizing your Google shopping campaign and scaling them. So stick till the end, but without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into the content. So optimizing Google shopping ads and your guide to six figures via Google. So before we get into the specifics, you have to make sure that you at least have one Google shopping campaign running for all of your products. And if you don't know how to do that, the link should have popped up in the top right for the more beginner tutorials on how that's done. Be sure to watch those videos before coming over here. But this is assuming that you already have run your Google shopping campaign for at least five to seven days and you're starting to see some results. We're going to start off with the bad ads first to show you guys exactly what bad advertisements are when it comes to Google shopping. So the first thing that just screams that it's a bad shopping campaign and you should do something about it is that the Google campaign is spending your budget too quickly. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to be talking about solutions for these bad ads. But right now we're just going to go through a quick overview of exactly what bad ads look like. But the first one again is spending the budget too quickly, meaning the campaign is spending the budget within half of a day or by the end of the day, the campaign has spent two times your budget. Google shopping campaigns technically are allowed to spend up to two times your campaign budget. So if you have a campaign running at $10 per day, that would mean that the campaign has spent around $20. But that is one thing that just screams that it is a bad campaign and you should do something about it. The next one is that the bid per keyword is too high. So while looking at the specific keywords and exactly what you're average cost per link click is you have to make sure that the link click cost on average is not above a dollar because if it is above a dollar you're paying way too much for your campaign this is not like facebook ads where it can be up to a dollar fifty per link click because if that is the case in google ads it will be very hard to get any type of profit or even sales in the long run so an ideal shopping campaign is when your cost per link click on average is below one dollar and nowadays i'm even starting my general testing campaigns at 30 cent cost per link click. So the way I set up my shopping campaign is I set it at maximized clicks and for the bid limit, I set it at $0.30. I figured out that that specific bid limit is around a good way to stay profitable instead of just spending money quickly. And especially if it's above a dollar, that is really a bad cost per link click and it would be time to optimize them or restart your whole campaign. But the third thing that just screams that it is a bad campaign is that you're not getting any sales on the specific products after the campaign has reached the profit margin for each individual product. This means that the campaign has spent the total of the profit margin or above for each individual product and that product has not gotten you any sale. Again, I'll be going over exactly what to do in each case during the end of the video. But the fourth thing that tells you that it is a bad campaign is that the campaign is just not spending anything. A lot of times you'll have campaigns up and running and sometimes the budget may be super high as well, $100 a day, $200 a day, but the campaign does not spend anything. And there are specific reasons for why this happens. Again, we'll go over that in the one of the last slides. But the fifth and final metric that just tells you it's a bad ad is that the keywords are not related to the products. For instance, if you're selling a skateboard on your Shopify store and the keywords that you're ranking for are for bicycles or motorbikes, then there's a problem. Google is not specifically able to know exactly what niche your product is in and that would be the reason as to why you're not ranking for specific keywords. But now that we've gone over the bad ads, let's look at what qualifies the advertisement as good. So the first thing that tells you that it is time to really optimize your campaigns and take them further is that you've gotten at least four or five sales on the overall campaign or for one specific product. I normally only scale products after each individual product has gotten at least four to five sales. So let's say I'm selling a skateboard on my Shopify store and a specific skateboard gets five sales. Then it is time to scale that to the moon. The second thing that tells you that your shopping campaign is potentially profitable and it may be time to take things forward is that 
after four to five days of running the campaign, your overall cost and sales equal to about break even or they're slightly profitable. In this case, even if it's at a slight loss, that is not a big issue because we are going to start optimizing it by excluding keywords and such so that we can turn this campaign into a lot of profits. But the third thing that tells you that it is time to optimize the campaign is that a single or multiple products are getting link clicks. It is really a good time to see that your products are getting link clicks. That just means that there is demand for those products on Google. And the fourth thing to tell whether a campaign is good or not is if the campaign is reaching the daily budget that you have set each day or is slightly exceeding it at a break even cost or slight profits. And the fifth and final metric is that you're getting abandoned carts on your Shopify store. Again, that means people are interested in the products you're selling and they're clicking onto your website. But you have to know that this entire process takes four to five days. After launching your campaign, you cannot be expecting any type of results for at least three to five days. In fact, a brand new Google Shopping account takes about two weeks to optimize. So you would need to wait that time period or at least five days before making any types of changes or coming to any conclusions. But after you're checked whether your shopping campaign is either fit for the bad category or the good category, it is time to move on to specific stages. And there are two stages in this strategy. Stage number one is where we start kind of scaling a specific product that is getting you some traction. So in order to start really scaling each specific product that's getting you sales, you're going to want to duplicate the original campaign by copying and pasting it. Do not create a brand new campaign. I've noticed recently that if I just copy and paste the campaign, Google actually optimizes the newly duplicated campaign much better depending on the results that your original campaign got. So just go ahead and duplicate it by copying and pasting it. And what you want to do as the next step is to exclude all of the other products besides the one that got you sales in the first place. Because again, this campaign is solely for that specific product which was getting you sales. So you want to make sure to exclude all the products and only let the one that got you sales continue to run. And here's the important part. This is where we decide the cost per link click and the bidding strategy. So when it comes to the cost per link click, you want to use the average cost per link click that the product was getting on the original campaign. So let's say you were selling the keyboard that got you five sales on your general testing campaign where it was selling with all of the other products, but this specific keyword had an average cost per link click of 25 cents. That means you want to set the max bid limit for this newly duplicated campaign at 25 cents. You do not want to exceed that or you do not want to make it lower than that. This is stage one. So we want to duplicate the exact metrics that we're getting you results in the first place. So set the bid limit at what the original cost per link click was. And you want to optimize this newly created campaign for maximized clicks. Again, the reason why we do maximize clicks is in the first place is to give Google a better chance of really understanding what the product is, what kind of keywords to show it for, what kind of keywords to not show it for, etc. And maximize clicks really lets Google take care of that really quickly and efficiently. Just because it is maximized clicks does not mean it's going to spend fully for that 25 cents. Currently, I have an individual campaign running for one of my winning products on my Google ad store and the max bid limit for that campaign is around 20 cents, but I'm getting an average link click of about 8 cents. So as you can see, once Google starts to get the hang of exactly who to show it for, the costs will automatically reduce. But be sure to set the bid limit at the average cost per link click of your original campaign. And you want to make sure to start this at midnight. The only reason why I start these ads at midnight is because I want to give the Google campaign an entire day to fully optimize. It is very similar to Facebook ads in the sense that you want to let a whole day go by where Google is just optimizing everything that it possibly can. But once you have let this specific stage go and you have waited around an additional five days after completing stage one, it is time to go on to stage two. This is where we really decide whether we want to continue with the product or stop it and go back to the basics. So unless your cost per purchase for the product is not double what your normal cost per product should be, you do not want to touch the ad for four to five days. It does not matter whether it's getting at a higher cost per purchase than your profit margin or a lower cost per purchase. You want to let it fully optimize for four to five days. And that is one thing about Google. It is sort of a waiting game. With Facebook, you can make daily decisions, but with Google ads, you have to make decisions based on three to five day metrics and you have to wait that long before doing anything. So unless the budget is spending like crazy on your newly duplicated campaign, do not touch it for at least three to five days 
Normally I wait a full five days. But once you've waited a full five days and you're getting results that are possibly good and under your ideal cost per purchase, you wanna start excluding keywords which are not related to the products. And usually I exclude keywords after they've crossed my profit margin. So let's say for instance, I buy skateboard on AliExpress for $10 and I sell it on my Shopify store for $30. In that case, I have a $20 profit margin. That means I can spend up to $20 per keyword before deciding whether to shut it off or not. So in this case, you would let the keywords run until they have crossed profit margin of $20 without any sales, and then you would exclude them. The only exception to this rule is if the keyword is specifically not related at all to the product. Again, it goes back to the skateboard and bicycle example. If you're selling a skateboard and you start ranking for bicycle keywords, that is not good and you wanna exclude those keywords immediately. But this is what follows after the five day period after completing stage one and after you've analyzed your results after waiting the full five days, you can decide whether it is time to go back to optimizing the campaign or scaling the campaign. And usually I wait additional two days after waiting five days for the scaling method. So when it comes to scaling, the strategy is very simple. I start increasing the budget by $10 every three to five days after waiting a full period of seven days and noticing that the campaign is working under my profit margin and it is getting me profit. Because in the end, sales don't mean anything if there is no profit. So just because you're getting sales does not mean you should scale. Only after you've confirmed that you're getting profits, I would start the scaling process. And again, you wanna increase the budget by $10 every three to five days. Sometimes in my own experience, what I've noticed is that after I increase the budget by $10 for a winning campaign, it usually turns to full crap for the next two days or so. And then after the third day, it starts to do well again and even better than before. So that's why Google Ads is a full waiting game. You have to wait the full three to five days because that is how long each campaign takes to optimize. But if the campaign has crossed your cost per purchase after even the three to five day range and it's not profitable after five days, you wanna scale back to the budget that was working. So let's say for example, you're selling skateboards and you were running a profitable campaign at $40 and you decided to scale it for $50. But after waiting the full five days, you notice that your cost per purchase increased significantly and you're not getting good results as you were before, there are two options for you. The first option is to scale back to $40 and the second option is to lower your bid limit by five cents. Either of these two options work and you should definitely test out both one at a time each. But that will give you a good understanding of whether the campaign is worth scaling or not and whether you should revert back to the original budget. But after you've scaled about five times, you wanna start increasing the budget by 20% each time. And this is the general process for scaling. There's nothing too complicated. People usually like to complicate these things, but it is a very simple process. And the more you complicate it, the more you're gonna make it harder for yourself to understand what you're doing and to get profits. But as promised, let's speak about the solutions for your bad ads and exactly what you should be doing. If you do notice that your ad your Google campaign falls under the bad ad category. So the first issue is that the budget is flying by too fast. Google campaign, the Google campaign is spending too much of it within half of a day's period or overspending. In this case, you will have two options. The first option is to lower your budget for the entire campaign by five to $10. And the second option is that you lower the bid by 10 cents. In my own experience, I've been noticing that implementing either the lowering the budget, implementing lowering of the budget or lowering the bid help, really helps get the campaign back on track. But again, you'll have to wait three to five days before making any conclusions. The second problem is when your bid is too high, meaning you're getting link clicks of above a dollar each. Remember, this is not Facebook ads. You do not want to get link clicks at above a dollar unless you're selling products which cost above $100. But in that case, you want to lower the entire bid of the campaign to 30 cents or 35 cents. And if your campaign was already at 30 cents and 35 cents, you want to lower the bid by 10 cents. This will really help you get a lower cost per link click and let Google optimize only for those specific keywords which can get you the most amount of profit with the least amount of clicks. And just a heads up, doing this will lower the traffic you're getting on your store, but would you rather take a lot of profit or no sales or less profit but more sales? The third problem is when there are no sales even after spending the profit margin for a product. In that case, the solution is very simple. You just have to exclude that product. This is where it goes back to the Facebook ads mentality where you just have to kind of move on from testing that product. Not every product you test is going to be a winner. 
even for Google ads. So even though it may be getting link clicks, if it's not getting you profitable sales, then there's no point in running that ad. You want to just exclude the product. The fourth problem and the most common one is that the campaign is just not spending anything. This kind of problem usually occurs because your budget is too low or the products that you have require a higher bid limit. And usually what I've noticed is if I increase the bid limit by five cents to 10 cents, the campaign does start spending. And you have to monitor for three to five days, see how much it spends, whether it's spending your entire budget or not. If it's still not spending your entire budget, you wanna repeat that process again, increase the bid by five cents to 10 cents until it starts spending your full budget. And then that is where you look for the other metrics mentioned earlier in the video. But the fifth and final problem usually that I see is that the keywords are not related to the product. In that case, again, the solution is very simple. You just exclude those keywords straight up, no questions asked. But this is the general process when it comes to optimizing your Google Shopping campaigns. Again, if we go back to the basics, you have to understand whether your ad falls under the bad ads category or the good ads category. And if it does fall under the good ads category, you want to go through these two stages. Stage one involves just duplicating the campaign and only running the winning product. Stage two involves waiting five days and then deciding whether you want to scale that duplicated campaign or not. And there are various methods to scale. You can increase the budget by $10 or by 20% each time. And at each step of the process, you want to look at these common problems and determine whether the ad is falling under these specific specific problems. And if it is, you want to apply these solutions. But hopefully that did help you with taking your Google Shopping campaign to the next level. If it did, let me know down in the comment section the results that you're getting. But that was it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.